Whenever we solve for the optimal consumption bundle of a consumer, we set up a utility maximization problem. So, for instance, if the underlying indifference map can be represented by the utility function u is equal to x1 times x2, as we've often assumed, we can set up the problem that we'd like to maximize that utility, x1 times x2, choosing x1 and x2 subject to the budget constraint. And so far, whenever we specify that budget constraint, we've assumed specific values for income and for the prices. So we've assumed an income level of 500, a price of good 1 of 50, and the price of good 2 of 25. But we could express that budget equation in a more general form without specifying what the prices are and what the income level is. In that case, we would express it as P1 times X1, our spending on good 1, plus P2 times X2, our spending on good 2. That has to be equal to income. We can then solve that problem in exactly the same way as we have been. We set up the Lagrange function, which is equal to the thing that we're trying to optimize, x1, x2, plus lambda times the constraint where we collect all the terms to one side. So i minus p1, x1, minus p2, x2. We then take the first order conditions which are the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian with respect to the things we're choosing, x1 and x2, and with respect to lambda. So the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x1 is equal to x2 minus lambda times p1. And we set that equal to 0. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x2 is equal to x1 minus lambda times p2. We set that equal to 0. As soon as we have that, we can use those two equations to get rid of the lambda. We just take the negative term to the other side. So x2 is equal to lambda times p1. And x1 is equal to lambda times p2. And then we divide these equations by each other to cancel out the lambda. Then we can solve for x2, and we get x2 is equal to just a function of the prices, p1 over p2, and x1. So we just multiply through by x1. Finally, we take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda, and that gives us back this, and we set that to 0, which is just our budget equation. It's just this equation. So we can just write down this equation and skip a step. P1 x1 plus P2 x2 is equal to i. And since we have an expression for x2 that's just a function of the prices in x1, we can use that and substitute it in for this x2. So then we get P1 times x1 plus P2 times x2 expressed in terms of x1, so p1 over p2 times x1 is equal to income. But now we have a p2 in the numerator and in the denominator, so they cancel. And we just get 2 times p1 x1 is equal to i. Dividing through by 2p1, we get x1 is equal to i divided by 2p1. Then we can take that and substitute it back into our equation for x2 to get that x2 is going to be equal to p1 over p2 times our expression for x1, i divided by 2p1. Now the P1s cancel, and we're just left with I divided by 2P2. These functions for X1 and X2 are called our demand functions. 
they tell us for any economic environment, for any set of prices, and any income level, how much of X1 and X2 are consumers going to consume if she optimizes? So, for example, if we go back to an example where we had income equal to 500, the price of good 1 equal to 50, and the price of good 2 equal to 25, we would just substitute these in here for I and the prices to get what the optimal consumption bundle would be. So for x1, we would get 500 divided by 2 times 50. 2 times 50 is 100. 500 divided by 100 gives us x1 equal to 5. And similarly for x2, we divide 500, our income, divided by 2 times 25. 2 times 25 is 50. 500 divided by 50 gives us x2 is equal to 10. That's exactly the consumption bundle we got when we solved this optimization problem, but we set income to 500, the price of good 2 to 25, and the price of good 1 to 50. Now, in this particular case, the demand for x1 is just a function of income and the price of good 1. It's not a function of the price of good 2. And similarly, the demand for x2 is just a function of income and the price of good 2, but not a function of the price of good 1. That's a special case. It emerges from indifference maps that can be represented by utility functions that take the Cobb-Douglas form. In general, that's not going to be the case. So for example, if we had a utility function that's equal to x1 to the 1 half plus x2 to the 1 half, so instead of multiplying, we have a plus sign in here, that wouldn't be a Cobb-Douglas utility function but to, it turns out to represent an indifference map that satisfies all our usual assumptions. If we plug this in for x1 and x2, x1 times x2 in our maximization problem, and we solve the problem again, we would get different demand functions. In particular, we would get that x1 is equal to p2 times i divided by p1 times p1 plus p2. And for x2, we would get p1 times i divided by p2 times p1 plus p2. So you can check that that's right by just resolving this problem, but using this utility function instead. Now we have the demand for x1 being a function of the price of good 1, the price of good 2, and income. So it's a function of the entire economic environment. So in general, then, demand functions will take the form that the function, the demand function for good x1, is a function of both prices and income. And the demand function for good 2 is also a function of both prices and income. 